the St. Henry peatland in Quebec, Canada. Now many of us use sphagnum moss or peat moss in our containers or in our gardens, but I'm sure not many of us know where that product comes from. Well, today we're going to explore an active peatland and look at the harvesting process and also look at how the bogs are restored after harvesting. It's a fascinating process and I think it's very important for us all to know where the products we use come from. Peat is an organic material harvested from a peatland, which can be a bog or a fen. And the difference between those is both hydrological and in pH. The bog tends to be hydrologically isolated and has a acidic pH, whereas a fen is fed by surface water or groundwater and is alkaline. Both types of peatland are characterized by a more rapid rate of growth than decomposition. So the plant material accumulates faster than it breaks down and this results in an accumulation of this carbon rich organic matter that we call peat. Now this accumulates very slowly. The peat's formed at a rate of only one millimeter per year and so the peatlands in Canada have been developing since the last glacial retreat for about four to ten thousand years. Now, the plant itself is a sphagnum moss, and it's composed of leaves, branches, and stems, but no true roots. And the plant also grows very slowly at a rate of about 2 to 12 centimeters a year. And one of the most remarkable features of sphagnum is its water holding capacity. So here's some dry sphagnum moss uh, just purchased at the store, and I've rehydrated it. So it's not as fresh and lovely as you find in the, in the bog itself, but it still holds a great amount of water. You can see it just kind of squeeze out of there. Um, and this is what's wonderful. This is why we use it horticulturally to moisten plants like this water loving plants like uh, this Venus flycatcher and even some of our epiphytes like the orchid will use it as a potting media for that. Now, in the bog itself, this water holding capacity is essential to creating the bog environment. It's the sphagnum that holds water in the system. There's around a dozen or more species of sphagnum moss as well as several other mosses in the bog. We also find other plants, uh, particularly heaths like the cranberry and numerous herbaceous plants like the pitcher plant growing there. The St. Henri peatland is a bog containing both active harvest sites and closed sites that are under restoration. Peat harvesting begins by clearing vegetation from the area to be harvested, and the bog is then drained by digging shallow ditches along the periphery. The dense layers of peat must be dried before it can be harvested, and this is done by running harrows over the top layer to loosen the peat, which then dries in the sun. Once it's dried, the top layer is vacuumed into large harvesters. At each harvest, only a one inch layer of peat is collected. So a single section of peatland can be harvested for 12 to 40 years, depending on the depth of the peat. The harvesting of peat is regulated by the Canadian government and is classified as mining because of the method of extraction. And the harvest of peat has been the subject of much controversy, which has guided the Canadian peat industry to research and implement sustainable practices. One of the primary results of this work to date has been development of peatland restoration practices. The goal of restoration is to reestablish the plant community and hydrology of the peatland to that of a naturally functioning peat accumulating ecosystem. This is accomplished through a process called the moss layer transfer technique. First, the restoration site is graded and flattened, and a berm is built around the edge of the field to allow the site to hold water. Plants are then collected from a donor site. A donor site is an area of the bog or fen that has not been previously harvested and has a healthy plant community. The surface vegetation of the donor site is shredded to a depth of 10 inches, and the resulting plant fragments are then collected and transported to the restoration site. The donor site can recover very quickly because the, only the upper layer is harvested. 
The shredded plant material, which is composed primarily of sphagnum, is distributed over the restoration site using a manure spreader. And it's then covered with a layer of shredded straw to provide protection and maintain the soil moisture as the newly introduced plant fragments establish. After the vegetation is in place, the drainage systems that had been installed when the bog came under harvest are blocked to re-wet the site. Water levels need to be monitored very carefully through the restoration period because the water table fluctuates more than in the natural peatlands. Restored peatlands are monitored to ensure plant establishment over time. One of the earliest plants to recover is the haircap moss. This plant is a pioneer moss that plays an important role in the peatland restoration process. It is considered a nurse plant that helps other mosses and plants establish. Haircap moss stabilizes the soil by moderating the temperatures and that reduces the risks of frost heave. In a restored peatland, it is often most prevalent in depressed areas. Within a few years, the typical bog plant community recovers and is once again dominated by sphagnum mosses. Over time, the hydrology of the site will regulate as the moss layer thickens. Research suggests the annual carbon balance can be returned to near natural conditions within 15 to 20 years of restoration. Carbon sequestration is an important global function performed by Canadian peatlands. So re-establishing this function is essential to a successful peatland restoration.